This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. Here in Studio One, I've loaded up this virtual instrument, Symphobia 2 by Project Sam. But what we're gonna discuss in this video doesn't depend upon this particular instrument. It can be applied to many, if not most, virtual instruments that you're likely to use. Now, before we get into this, let's just have a quick listen to this short demo I've made, and I want you to pay particular attention to the various string sounds that are being used. <laughs> So we heard a few different sounds in there. First of all, we heard the staccato sounds. Then there were these pizzicato sounds. Then these snaps. And also that weird sound effect, I guess, at the beginning. And these are all achieved using something called articulations, the various different sounds that this particular instrument can make. And on many of these instruments, we're able to switch between these different articulations using something called key switches. You can see the key switches on this instrument on the keyboard down here, they're in red. They're basically keys which are reserved to switch the sound and they don't actually play any notes in themselves. Now I've implemented this in this short demo and it worked absolutely fine but I've done it in the most difficult way the old-fashioned way if you like because I've actually inserted those key switch changes in the on the actual piano roll itself you can see this at the bottom we've got these notes down here which don't actually make any sound but they change those articulations we've even got one right at the top here just a little one there um, which actually changes the sound a little bit as well now there's three main problems with this first of all it looks kind of ugly you can't really figure out by looking at this what's actually happening okay you unless you really know the instrument super well you wouldn't know which changes are being made here and you'd have to experiment a lot the other thing which doesn't work very well is the fact that we have to let the playhead play past these notes in order to get the changes happening. I'll demonstrate what I mean. If I move to the end section here and play the two slap notes, and then I move my playhead to halfway through that long note at the beginning, which was playing the effects, and I press play, we don't get the effects yet. We just get those slap notes that we already had set up on there. So um, you actually have to play past the very first note or the beginning here to get that effect. And that can be really problematic when you've got some articulations which last a long time in particular sections and you go there and you have to make sure you play from the beginning of that section. Not always convenient. Now the third thing which is rather irritating about this method is if you are working in the score view at all, those notes are actually shown in the score. I should say those notes which are changing the articulation. These very low notes here and this one very high note. And of course you wouldn't want those to be in the score. They're not notes that a player would be playing. Now this is the hard way of doing it, but of course Studio One has a very easy way and very refined way of doing it which we're going to talk about in this video and it's called sound variations. Hi folks, I'm Mike. And I hope you're well. Sound variations is a feature I think you really must know about if you're gonna be working with virtual instruments in Studio One. Now I'm not gonna cover every single part of it, but what we are gonna cover is gonna be useful to you 95% of the time. I thought it'd be nice to start with the end result, where we're heading to with this tutorial. So in this example, you're gonna hear the same demos you did at the beginning, but this time I fully implemented the sound variations feature. Let's just have a quick listen to make sure we are getting the same result. Now if 
we look at the piano roll, we can see that those notes that were being used for key switches are no longer there. We do have some notes blocked out in red, and that simply indicates that these notes are reserved for key switches, and we can't play normal notes that you would hear on there. We can, however, see where the switches are happening down at the bottom here. I'm on the Sound Variations tab, and you can clearly see with the words on these blocks which articulations are being used. So right away, we're in a better position. Not only that, but if I move the playhead to halfway through one of these sections, you will hear the actual sound that you're supposed to hear, the articulation you're supposed to hear. So I'll go halfway through this first section here, this first bar, and we get the end of those weird long notes, okay? I'll go to the end, we'll play those two snap notes. And then we'll go down here where it should be staccato, non-snap notes, and have a listen. And we heard the staccato notes. So that's a big improvement right away. And if we want to change which articulations we're using, super easy. Go down to where it says staccato at the bottom here, double click on that, and you can see the different articulations available there. I could just change the snap just like that, and we're going to hear the snap articulation. And finally, of course, if we go to the score view, we can see it's nice and clean now. We don't have those extra notes for the key switch changes there. So that's a big improvement. Now I've set all of this up using the sound variations editor. I can open that by clicking on this little spanner here. I'll open that and you can see it all set up there. And I'm going to show you how to set this up for your instrument during this video. However, before you dive in and do that, I just want to show you a couple of ways that you can get hold of free uh, sound variations, which may already exist for the instrument you're going to use, and that will save you time in terms of setting them up. Now, I'm sure like me, you'd rather just get on and make music than create sound variation files. So before you go ahead and create a custom one yourself, it's worth looking to see if somebody else has already made one. Now, in this example, I'm using this ample sound upright bass. What I'm going to do is press F5 on my keyboard to open up my browse panel. Then at the top, I'm going to go across to cloud. And then I'm just going to go into the Presonus Exchange. You may have to sign in for that. It will prompt you if you need to. And then in the search bar at the top, I'll just start typing uh, ample for ample sound. I'll give it a moment. You can see there's a few ample sound sound variation files here. And just at the top here, we can see sound, ample sound, bass, acoustic key switches. That's probably the one I need. So I can just select that, click on install at the bottom, and it just takes a moment or two and it will be installed. And what that means is now, if I go to the sound variations cog, just click on that, then go to the top, to this selector here, and I can see the ones I've already got installed. I'll go to Ample Bass Acoustic, like so, and there's my sound variation files already set up and ready to go for this instrument. Now, it's also worth noting that some instruments have these sound variations built in in. Presonus made sure that there was an architecture available for plug-in uh, manufacturers to take advantage of, and it's worth checking that as well. So rather than going to the cloud, I'm just going to load up a particular instrument here. Um, this is called uh, the Vienos, Vienna Synchron Player from VSL. I'm going to drag that into my project. You can see that's loaded up here, and I'll go ahead and load in some strings. I'll just go for solo strings, violin, that's fine. You can see that that's loaded up there. And now if I go across and click on that spanner icon again for my sound variations, you can see it's already set up in here for this instrument, okay? Even though I don't actually have a, a, a sound variations file on my system for this. So it's worth checking that before you go to the trouble of setting all of this up. So I couldn't find an existing sound variations file for Symphobia 2, so I'm going to start from scratch. I've got my virtual instrument selected and over on the left I'm going to click on that spanner icon next to sound variations that opens up this interface here. Now before we get started it's worth noting 
which keys are key switches for your particular instrument. It's easy to see on this interface because we can see the various articulations and in the top left corner of each, we can see which note actually does the switch, okay? Yours may have it in the manual or you may have to experiment or it may have it somewhere else on the interface, but you need to know this first. And it's worth counting how many basic variations you've actually got. In this case, we've got six. Let's start off with the first one, okay? So over in our sound variations interface, I'm gonna click on new variation. We heard a little sound there for that sustained sound. So we're going to call this, as it's called in the actual plugin, we're going to call it uh, sustain, okay? Now, it's worth doing this up front. With your first one set up, go ahead and set the main two settings here, the input key. Now, note that for this particular plugin, it's C minus one. Don't get confused here. This one says C1, it's not the same thing. We need to make sure it's C minus one. So I type that in here, and I'm gonna do the same in this activation sequence column here as well. So C minus one. Okay, that's our first one set up. But the other five are gonna be pretty easy. And that's because with most plugins, they're all next to each other on the piano keyboard. So what we can do is go ahead and just click on this new variations button five more times quickly. One, two, three, four, five. It's set up the variations and it hasn't named them, of course. We need to do that. But it has incremented the input and activation sequence keys here, yeah? So they're already actually working if I click around them. I just don't know which one is which because I need to rename them. Let me do that quickly now. So it's easy to see now which one is which and we can easily switch between them. Now, if yours don't happen to be in sequence like this and you have to edit these notes, you can go ahead and do so either in the boxes where we did it here or you can do it on in the panel over on the right hand side. And I'm drawing your attention to this panel because you don't actually have to use um, key switches to change articulations. Some instruments will use other things. So do note you can switch switch this off, the input pitch, we can switch it off, set it to nothing. And do note that down here where it says activation sequence, we can click here, we can select no on off as we already did there. We can just make it no on or no off, or we can use controllers, CCs, okay, or program changes or the other things that we can see here. So this isn't restricted just to key switches. There's other ways that we can switch our variations as well, depending on our particular instrument. Now there's one of these which is a little bit different to the others, this effects articulation that we've got here. Let's talk about that now. So if we look at the last articulation with this plugin, it's called effects with contrabasses and we would select this one as you can see by pressing the F minus one key on our keyboard. But if we actually click on this on the interface, we can see that there's two additional choices that we can make with this articulation. Either we can use glissando effects or pixicato and flagellate effects, I think it's called here. Now the way we would select either of these is to first of all, press F minus one for the basic articulation, followed by one of these two, C7 or C sharp seven. Okay, they're much, much higher up on the keyboard. So we need to actually um, click on a sequence of keys to make these choices. We can do that over here with our setup quite easily. What I'm going to do is select the basic setup I did for this and I called it effects. I'm going to rename this to, um, let's call it Glissando effects because that's what it's called in the plugin. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is get rid of this input pitch here. I'm just going to go up to the top and just make sure that nothing is selected for the input pitch. That's important because they both use the same input pitch and uh, the studio one gets a little bit confused when you've got two sound variations with the same input pitch. So make sure nothing is selected there. Then if we go to the bottom, we've got our initial selection, which is the F minus one key. We can leave that as it is. And then we're gonna do our next activation sequence. So we'll click on this, add note on off. It doesn't really matter in this case. And then I'm gonna type in the value I need for this, which is C7, okay? 
So we've got that one already set up. It's important you do it in this sequence because now if we select it and then click on new variation, we've it's created our new variation, which we can rename. I'll do it quickly. We call it PIS and flag because I can't be bothered to type all the rest. You can see that because we did it after we created the first one, it automatically incremented that second note in the activation sequence. If you have to go in there and manually correct it, that's fine. But if you do it in this way, it sort of automatically does it for you. And you can see as I click on each of these, it selects those two different effects in our instrument. I'd just like to remind you that if you want to release your music to platforms such as Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Google Play, etc., follow that VIP link in the description down below and you'll get 7% off of your sign up from our sponsor DistroKid. One of the things I like to do before I finish off is set up my default score variation. This is just in this case the articulation which will be used if I don't define one in my piece. So all I need to do is select which one I want to use. I'll use sustain here and then over on the right hand side just click on default score variation. Now when you've done all of this you wouldn't want to have to do this with every single project would you? So let's make sure that you save it as a preset. So just go up to the top here um, click on store preset yeah like so then with the dialog box that opens you can give it a name you can give it a description you can put it in a subfolder if you wish but just make sure you do that because you wouldn't want to have to go through this every single time so now that all of that is done we just have the fun of actually making use of these sound variations we can close the sound variations window now and there's a couple of different ways we can select them for our notes we can select the notes themselves so i'll just actually select all of them for now and then right click Go to apply sound variation and I'll choose um, staccato for example because most of them are going to be staccato. So that's one way that we can do it. And you can see that if I just choose say these two notes here, select them like so and right click and click on uh, apply sound variation, we'll use that glissando effect there, then that's reflected down at the bottom, okay? We can change where it happens by dragging the dividers between the two articulations, like so. And we can also add in different articulations at different points by double clicking on these blank areas um, above or below the actual sound variation. So if I double click here, then I can select a different variation here, okay, and it starts from that point. So it's as easy as that to be honest with you for the basic operation. We've been using the piano roll quite a lot in this video and if you'd really like to learn more about the piano roll, I recommend you watch this video right here. Or is it here?